I've made quite a few planes in Besiege before, but recently someone suggested that I try making a ground effect plane. These things can only fly well near the ground, and they have some very interesting movement abilities. Now starting down the sandbox here, you can see the first thing I'm doing is starting to build up some logs, and on those I'm putting down some wheels. Now before I started working on the plane, I actually wanted to work on a car instead, and kind of show you why I wanted to make this. Now I started out by maxing out the speed of all of the wheels, and you can see here, <laughs> It's really not that fast. Now next up, I tried adding on more wheels onto the wheels I already had to get double the speed on them, and this did help, but now I was having a lot of skipping issues, and even this just wasn't that fast. Now of course, I could start adding on suspension here, and that is what I did next, but I'd realized very quickly if I wanted to make something very fast that went across the ground, it was going to need to hover above it, or else I just wasn't going to be able to generate that much speed. But you can see next, I braced up this frame a lot better, and after I did that, I deleted off the wheels. Now, with all that done here, I started building up a better central structure, and I put down some water cannons on the outside corners. Once I did that, I put down some torches to turn them into steam cannons, and I also added in sensors. Now, this is the beginnings of my hover vehicle, and the idea is that each of the sensors is going to detect when the ground gets too close and fire off the steam cannon that's right next to them. Now, to try this out directly here, it was working better than I was expecting. It was bouncing a lot, but it actually actually was staying in the air, and if there was some improving, I should be able to make this work. Now my first idea for extra stability here was to change the water cannons from 4 times power to 3 times. Making them less powerful should make them a little less jittery, and this did help, but now it was bouncing a lot more than before. Now I had quickly realized another problem is that if I add too much weight onto one side of this, it's going to tip over too much, and I really have no way to fix that. So to solve these stability issues here, I wanted to delete the frame I had and push these water cannons way further out. By doing this, it should make it a lot easier to stabilize, and once I got all these on the corners here, I just used some more braces to hold them all together. Now this was a good start, and it was already a bit more stable, but the braces were bending quite a bit here, and I decided to move up the starting cube to give it a much more stable geometry. Now this was an improvement, but it still was bouncing a lot more than I was expecting, and to fix that, I added on one water cannon on each side. By adding on more water, cannons, it should make it a lot easier for this thing to stay up in the air, and with this done, it did seem to help out quite a bit. Now, for some extra stability, I also added another ballast above the one I already have to give it another attachment point. This was a massive improvement, and you can see already, this thing was staying in the air and bouncing very little. So, this looking great, I actually decided to go here and delete most of what I had and build up another structure. That might seem a little weird, but I wanted to miniaturize this a lot while also using a lot of the things I learned. You can see starting out, a lot of my cannons are way closer together, and I wanted to try bunching them up a lot more. Now, after putting two more in the center and pushing them out a little bit here, I used a lot more braces than before to keep it all together. And after setting up the distance sensors to keep this thing perfectly off the ground, giving it a test, it was working pretty well. It was bouncing a little bit, though, so to fix that, I added on a couple of water cannons in the center that permanently are going to be on. These two steam cannons make it float a lot easier, and with this, you can see here, I'm able to skate across the grounds pretty easily. Now, it was still bouncing side to side a bit, so to give it a bit of extra stability, I wanted to add on two extra ballasts to the outside here, and add on some wings. Now, you can see here, after adding on six to each side, I gave it a test now, and the wings are going to be very resistant to moving quickly. This seemed to make it float a lot easier here, and with this already, I seem to be moving quite well. There's even some times here where I was almost perfect perfectly stationary, and this was going to be a great start to the full plane. And with the core all built now, I wanted to turn my attention to the wings. Now you can see starting out, I deleted off those temporary wings I had, and I built up some ballasts much further out from the center. Now after I did that, I also built up a few ballasts further up around the core, and this is going to give me much better attachment points to start building off of. And of course, with all that done, I wanted to start working on the actual wing panels. Now starting out here, I built up some wood panels like this, and you can see I'm pushing them in further to the center. Now this is going to be the first of two components of the wing, and you can see the second part actually bends down quite a bit. Now, this is already quite weird, but you can see that it also bends forward. Now, ground effect planes have some very weird wings, and the reason for that has to do with the way they compress the air beneath them. Now, this effect doesn't perfectly translate into Besiege, but the idea of it is still there, and I wanted to capture the cool look it has. And of course, after spending a while bending the panels the way I wanted, 
on it, I started capping them off with some extra wood pieces. Now, once I got all that done here, I also tried sneaking in some wing panels inside the main wing. Now, these are going to provide the vast majority of the lift, and once I got all that on there, I wanted to copy it over the other side, and you can see it looks pretty good. Before I commit to that copy, though, there was a few extra things I wanted to add on, and one of those was this extra little piece on the very edge of the wing. This sort of bends up, and the normal reason this is here is to allow air to flow around it to keep the plane hovering. Now, the reason I wanted it was actually to sneak in a single wing panel, and this is going to help me stabilize quite a bit. And you can see here, I tried to rotate the wing panel to get that perfectly in place, but after bracing it up, I copied this over for real this time, and with that, I wanted to start working on the tail. Now, one thing I hadn't really thought of so far is how heavy this was getting. Realistically, I wanted to keep this thing pretty light so it could stay reasonably agile, but all these wing panels do have quite a bit of mass, so this is going to be a bit of an issue. Now, keeping this in mind, I wanted to make the tail as light as I could, so I started out here by only using a few wood panels to build up the basic structure. Now, after getting those supports in place here, I used a wood panel to completely cap that off. With that done, I also copied over two longer sections sections in each side, and this gives a cool little spoiler effect. And of course, with all that, I also added on two extra stabilizers to the ends to make it sort of look like the wings a bit more. Now, I also went ahead here, and I turned off aerodynamics for all of the panels, and this just makes them cut through the air a lot easier. But of course, giving this a test now, it seemed to instantly fall down, and it also fell back. Now, that was telling me that this thing was very tail-heavy, and to combat that, I wanted to work on the cockpit. I wasn't sure if this is going to have enough mass to perfectly counteract that, but at the very least, it should help out a little bit, and once I have all these panels on here, I could start tuning the steam cannons to keep this in the air. Now, of course, building this up was pretty simple here, and you could sort of see the rough shape that I was going for. Now, I wanted to try to keep this thing as simple as possible for now, and I figured that later I could curve all the panels and get it the way that I wanted it to look. And of course now, finishing fully paneling up the nose, I wanted to change out the two windows for glass, and with all that done here, I wanted to give it another test. Now this time, it was still tail heavy, but it was a little less bad than before, so it looked like it wasn't going to be awful to tune this. Now I started out by pulling back my steam cannons and making them go all the way on the back of the plane. This should make them a lot more effective at keeping myself in the air, and I did the same thing with the front steam cannon. Testing this out though, it just wasn't coming off the ground still, and I realized I was going to need a lot more static cannons to get this thing to fully come up. Now, to do that here, I started stacking as many cannons as I could in the middle of the plane, and doing this did seem to help it out quite a bit. There's a few times here where it's starting to turn a little bit on the ground, but it still wasn't able to fully come off. Eventually, though, I finally remembered that you could stack as many water cannons as you want on a single block, as long as that block has enough mass to hold them all together. Now, I started doing this to get as much thrust as possible, and you can see that I also pushed the side water cannons to the very edges of the wings. This is going to make them a lot more sensitive and hopefully able to keep everything off the ground. Now, after going ahead here and trying to brace everything up, I also had to be pretty careful with my torches to make sure they weren't we're gonna catch everything on fire. Now, finally here, I went to give it a test, and not only did it call off the ground, it actually fully managed to escape the ground, and was a little bit too powerful. Now, that was actually great, and I went ahead here, just deleted a couple of the cannons to make it a little bit more sensitive, and with all that done, I also tuned up some of the sensors to keep this thing balanced. And after doing that, you can see here, I'm actually able to hover right above the ground, and I could pretty much drift in any direction. Now, that's great, but I still need a way to be able to move this anywhere that I want. Now, before fully messing around the control system, I did want to finish paneling up the last few things I had here, and you can see I just want to get a smooth look over the top. Now, it was also at this point that I decided to leave the bottom mostly exposed. Now, this was to keep the thrust of the cannons actually hitting the ground, but I also wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to accidentally touch any of the torches and set this on fire. But now with the paneling all done, I also wanted to add on some steam cannons to the back of the plane here, and these are going to push me forward. You can see now trying them out, they're actually not too bad, and I got a pretty good amount of thrust. Now the speed that I got up to here is actually so great that I managed to take off the ground and start to go up too high. That was a great sign, and next up here, I want to add on two more steam cannons to the back of the plane to be able to turn left and right. Now after getting these set up here and adding on some torches, giving it a test, I 
was able to turn myself to the side. During this test, though, I also realized the plane was tilted down to the right, and to fix that, I wanted to add on a couple of wings to the back to give myself a bit of roll control. Next, it is implemented now, and I'm trying to do the same maneuver. This, though, still made me just take immediately off the ground, and I realized I was gonna need a better way to turn. Now, my original idea for this was to add on some yaw control to the back, and you can see now I'm able to tilt side to side, and this lets me pretty effectively turn. Now, of course, this wasn't too bad. I was able to make some tight turns here, but it also seemed to catch me on fire a lot, so it's gonna need to be a little more careful with how I made this work. Now, this seems to be a lot more effective at high speed, and already here, you seem able to turn to the side quite wait well. Now this wasn't bad at all, but I also realized that the nose was still coming off the ground really easily, and to fix that, I wanted to add on a wing pedal to the front here that's permanently bent down. Now of course, this is going to mean that at high speeds, the nose is going to get pushed down into the ground, and I can see that is working here. Now it was actually a bit too strong, because I could see the cannon was slowly gliding across the ground here, so to fix that, I added on a steering hinge, and I put the wing pedal on that hinge. Now after getting this in place, Place, I also attach it up to a speedometer so that if I got up to a certain speed, it'll start to lift that up a little bit to keep it from just slamming into the ground. And I could see here it was still coming off the ground relatively easily, but it wasn't nosing up just as easily as before, so this wasn't too bad. One other thing I had noticed once I got that tuned though is that one of the wings does like to just pop up off the ground, and I needed a way to try to counteract that. Now, my first idea here was to add on an angle meter to sense the rotation of the wing. Now, if I start to angle up a little too high, it should turn on the correct cannon to try to stop that turn. Now, trying this out here, it sort of was working, but I did have it inverted, so it ended up just making it tilt even further than before. Now, of course, just inverting the output of that signal was a pretty easy fix, and with all that done, I also added an altimeter here, and this will automatically turn off all of my passive thrust if I go up too high. This makes it a lot harder for the plane to go out of control, and finally here, I want to give this a test on the ground, and you can see this is working. I'm able to take off here and maintain relatively stable flight. Of course, though, it does struggle a little bit, and that is by design. The whole idea is I should be able to hop off the ground, and you can see here I'm hopping over this mountain, but ideally I should be able to rest back down on those steam cannons and glide across the ground. And trying this out here, I was able to fly right back down and actually stabilize myself once again. But of course, there's no way I'm going to get through this video without trying to make some sort of missile for this thing. Now I started out by doing some sort of simple rocket thing, but I realized I really wanted to use water cannons and make a missile that glides across the ground. That just seemed like a super fitting idea for this build, and you can see now I'm actually using four water cannons, and I'm using four angle meters to automatically stabilize this log. I also added on four torches here to turn these into steam cannons. And of course now, trying this out, it blasted away really quickly, so I wanted to add on four fins here to give this thing a little bit more of a straight trajectory. This did seem to help, and you can see here I was almost going in a straight line once I got up to speed. Now I also added on a steering hinge here to automatically be able to tilt myself once I got in the air. Trying this out though, it was struggling quite a bit, and I realized that the fins were preventing this thing from turning at all. Now I deleted off those fins, and you can see here I'm going for a slightly different design. This time I wanted to use wheels and have them turn back and forth to automatically stabilize the water cannons. I added one onto the front here, and I added on two to the sides. This should allow me to stay straight, and once I got these in place here, I added on some braces to give them something to rotate against. And try this out now, it actually seemed to be pretty good. You can see here it's able to stay in the air, and as the wheels rotate back and forth, they're keeping this pretty straight. Now for even more stability, I added on some wings here, and these seem to help out quite Wait a bit. Especially now, I wanted to add on some fans here and see how it would do once I got up to speed. And after configuring them up here, it actually seemed to be much better. Once I was going fast, the wings seemed to be doing a much better job of keeping me going straight, and this was looking pretty good. Now, of course, here, the missile's gonna need some sort of payload, so on the front of that wheel, I added on a grabber and also a bomb. This is gonna be a pretty simple payload, but you see now I'm able to crash into the mountain, and it does explode. So that this working pretty well here, I wanted to add it onto the bottom of the wing and see if I get it all to fit right into place. Now to attach it all up, I wanted to use a decoupler here, and you can see I'm just bracing it up to the very outside pieces of the wing. Now trying this out here, it does deploy, 
but I don't like how it deploys behind the plane. It seems like it has very little thrust and I was gonna need something else to be able to push it forward. Now I tried using rockets here, but you can see even at max power, they're just not that strong and realistically, that wasn't that great. Now I also thought about just tilting forward my water cannons that I was using to give myself a bit of a push forward. This seemed to be much better and you can see now as I glide across the ground, it picks up quite a bit of speed and I hit the mountain at 80 meters per second. Now it's gonna be just about the easiest thing I could do to get these things to move forward. So with that at least mostly sorted, I added another copy of this to the other side of the plane. Now trying this out here, it was sort of working. One of them did go forward and one of them got caught under the plane, but for the most part, they were able to get away from the plane easily enough. And some of these tests here, you can see they're actually able to glide across the ground and eventually hit into something. Now I did cheat slightly in this next test here and you can see I added out some flying blocks, but I'm using no bounds to give them some extra power. Now technically they don't need this, but giving them this extra power does make them glide across the ground a lot easier here, and you can see they perform quite a bit better. But with the plane finally ready to go here, I want to add on some paint and finish up this build. You can see I went for this yellow color, and I usually don't go for something like this, so I figured I might as well give it a shot. But now with it all painted up, I wanted to give it a few more tests here, and just try out all of its functionality. Now one thing I had noticed is that once I add on these missiles to the bottom of the plane, it's actually unable to get off the ground. That I figured was okay though, because getting off the ground was sort of a bonus feature, and it's actually pretty cool to be able to deploy the missiles and then fly up immediately to get out of the way. Now in this next test, you see I shot off the missiles immediately, and this is so I could show turning the plane. Now this is one of my favorite things about this plane, because we're able to turn it on the ground relatively quickly, and this sort of very quick angle change is something that normally isn't possible. Now overall, I was actually very surprised at just how stable this thing is. It seemed like adding on those wing panels really helped the stability both for the plane and the missile. To be honest though, I was glad this thing could move through the air at all. Now, so I had one last test here where I wanted to see how the missiles could do on a field of tents. Now, try this out. The missiles do have a slight tendency to curve directly into each other, but if you shoot them off close enough to the tents, you can see that effect is mostly minimized. But guys, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you have any other questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below. Make sure to like the video if you like the builds, and otherwise, till next time.